and welcome to another video. Today, me and Sam were going through the new Blood Angels Codex, so I'm very excited. Finally got my new Codex for my army that I absolutely adore and I've played since I was a kid, basically. Yeah. So we're just going to go do a run through it, because obviously we're not able to get the book early, so we got it when everyone else did. Not yet. Yeah, <laughs> maybe one day. Sam's thinking, how you for the Dark Angels book? <laughs> so we're just going to go through it and we're going to talk about how it affects my army and what we'll see on the channel and what changes we like, we don't like, and what Sam, who doesn't play Blood Angels, but you might be doing it for Crusade. Yeah, I'm going to start a little Flesh Terror's army for Crusade. Oh, very nice. So we're going to see what nice stuff they've got in there. And then the Dark Angels Codex is coming up soon as well, so yeah. hopefully this will give us a bit of foresight into what we're going to can expect in that new book as well. Yeah, because we can go through and we can see what's changed, and then based on the assumptions of what's changed, what hasn't changed, we can see what what's probably going to stay the yeah, same in Dark Angels. Yeah. So first up, we're going to take a look at the secondaries. So we've got secondaries. So the first secondary is a Purge of the Enemy secondary. Mm. So it's called Blade of Sanguinius, which I really like this one. It's really fluffy and I really want to use it. So when me and Sam do the premiere, of the codex on the channel, which will be out next week. Yeah. I'm going to use two of these, Ooh. just because I really want to use them, because I'm going to show the book off. So this is one of them that I'm going to use. So basically, start of the game, I pick a character, mm. he's issued a challenge, then you pick a character. Any character. Any character. Doesn't have to be a HQ. Doesn't have to be HQ, as long as you're a character. So obviously, the downside of this one is someone could pick a character that's going to hide away. Yeah. If it's like a support character and they're not going to come forward. Like if you're playing Harlequins, they could pick a Shadow Seer who's yeah. just going to sit at the back and you're not going to get to. Or Necrons could pick a Crypt Tech and just hide them at the back. Yeah, the unit. exactly. Not so involved. it's it's good because it's, it's fluffy mm. and I like it. But gameplay wise, I guess it's good to use if like me and you are going to use it. Yeah. And in like a game where you want to make it a bit fluffy or have a bit of fun, mm. and then you can be like, oh yeah, my warlord will fight your warlord, that's cool, <laughs> yeah. sort of thing. Like the old uh, the challenge between the uh, Space Wolves and the Dark Angels. Yes. That, that... was a nice fluffy thing. Yeah, that sort of thing. It's really good. And like in old Warhammer Fantasy, you used to do that with characters. Oh, you used nice. to cut you, if units smashed together and they were in units, you could call each other out. Oh, that's cool. And then you put them to the side and then they just have a duel, <laughs> which is really cool. But basically, whatever model of yours accepts, Okay. If I destroy that model, I get five victory points. Mm. If I kill it in combat, I get another five. That's very Blood Angels. It's really good, and then it gets better. If my challenger kills your challenger, I get the max. I get 15. 15. So it's pretty cool. It's I'd... good, but what if I pick a Catan? I'm happy with killing a god. Well, attempting to. Although... Mm. I'm getting ideas now. It's going to be Nightbringer, isn't it? <laughs> You'd be like, oh yeah, you can challenge her, yeah, Silent King. Silent I don't even know how many wounds he's got, could you imagine? Oh. That would be, that'd be so cool. It would. Oh, but if you were playing demons or something, Mortarion could accept. Yeah. You haven't met anybody who can kill Mortarion. How many, I don't even know Mortarion's stat, I've never played against him. I don't know. And he's like, a big boy. 18 wounds or something. Metal. Something like that. I think what I'd, have to be, what I'd have to do is I'd have to soften him up and then <laughs> jump in. And then in. go in for the, for the 15 pointer. Yeah. Mm. So a bit more strategic, but I, I quite like that one. That one's really good. That's true. You guys haven't seen the Nightbringer yet, have you, on this channel? So. No, we've not used the Nightbringer. Right. On the channel, that's, anyway. That's going to have to happen, though. <laughs> actually, to be fair, when we played, it was a game before we started the channel, actually. It, the last game we played, yeah, before we started filming was Necrons against Blood Angels. Yeah. And it's also the last time Kai beat me. It is, yeah. As soon as the camera's on, I can't win a game. It was really close, but the Nightbringer didn't do anything. It didn't do anything, though. I didn't use him properly, yeah. though. I've, I've kind of I've learned from my mistakes. It was your first time using him. It was. So, it, it always happens. You're like, oh, I'll use him this way, and then you use him, and then when you're in the game, you're like, actually, it's probably not how you should use him. Yeah, I was way too aggressive with him. Yeah. I just Because he's, he's such a beast. I just threw him forward. I thought he's going to go and kill everybody. Like a giant missile. Just then. get him in. No. What, you like smited him, and then... I shot him, smited him. And then killed him in combat. Killed him in combat. So that's, to be fair, that's what you'd need to do with your... So that'd be cool. So I just picked Mephist on. Mephist on against the knight. As a, as a challenger with yeah. my cast quickening and get like 10 attacks. I like that. <laughs> Although to be fair, 10 attacks is pointless if I've not knocked him down to just 3 wounds. That's true. Yeah, you're going to have to whittle him down first, but it's doable. It's, yeah, it's doable. He it says it's a, an attack. So the model that accepted the challenge was destroyed by... Oh, it's a melee attack. So I can't shoot you. 
Uh, and then get an extra 15, it has to be in combat. It has to be in combat. Very Blood Angels, I do like it. I can't be like, oh yeah, I challenge you, and then you're like, oh, I've softened you, I'll just plasma pistol you or something. <laughs> yeah. Can't do that, so. The That's next, cool, it's it really cool. I, just on versus the Nightbringer. I'm, I'm down with that. Can we make that the thumbnail as well? Yeah, we'll make it the thumbnail and everything. No, it's not our warlords, but I know it might be for you. Oh, it'll be my warlord. I'll make him my warlord. It can't be my warlord, but it looks cool, so. We can use him on the phone. We'll put him on. We'll put him on. Because it's, it's, the, it's <laughs> the jewel of the century. I like it. Or the millennia, I guess, because it's 40k. The next one is Fury of the Lost. So this is a No Mercy, No Respite. And score three victory points at the end of your turn if one or more units were killed... Were killed slash destroyed by a death company unit from your army. That's not bad. How many points? So you get three. Three. Just for killing a, a unit. So you kill a unit with death company and you get three points. If you're spamming Death Company, that could be okay. But you only yeah. get three points. I don't think it, the way it's worded, you don't get like six if you do two units in a turn. Do you get me? No, but you could do three per turn. Yeah, three per turn. Yeah. yeah. So I guess as long could... as the Death Company kill one unit every turn, you max it out. Yeah, that's true. Because initially I were like, Ooh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. Because Death Company tend to be a bit of a glass cannon. Yeah. They go in, they absolutely delete something, but then. Kind of stood out in no man's land. That's but. literally how I play them. Oh, I'm like, oh, fall on fury, <laughs> shut them up the board. <laughs> See you later, boys. <laughs> and just roll loads of dice and hope for the best. It's mm. probably not the best way to play them, but it's, I think it's it's the most fun. It's most fluffy. The one way around. <laughs> yeah, it. definitely not. Well, to be fair, actually, it is fluffy because in the new rules for Black Rage, they can they can't do actions. Oh. So they're not allowed to raise banners because they don't That's care. That's good. Because yeah, why would they care? They don't they're care. Just, I'm not going to stop and put this banner up. I'm too thirsty for they blood. They can't fall back either. At all. At all, which is very fluffy. Ooh, I like that. It's good. The um, Deathwing have got a very similar rule. Oh, have they? If they want to fall back, you have to roll dice and beat your leadership or something. Oh, they okay. Stay in, they stay stuck in. Because they want to in a circle out there, so yeah. they're like, now nah, we can do it. I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. No, I think I forgot it the last game, but I'm, I don't fall back anyway. Who falls back? I don't think it came up, to be fair. No. It, it, I fall back because I'm Tau. <laughs> Well, they've changed the fly rule, but we don't speak about that. Oh, no. Moving on. <laughs> Death from above. So you get two victory points at the end of your turn if an enemy unit was destroyed by a Blood Angels unit that came in from reinforcements this turn. Hang on a second, I need to compute that. <laughs> so, basic layman's terms, I deep strike, Inceptors, they wipe a unit, I get two victory points. Oh, so it's got to be the turn that you dropped in? Yeah. And it's just two victory points? It's just points. two. If I kill a character, I get three. It's the, I think it's the worst one. I'm just thinking about how you could possibly max that. You have to drop a unit in every turn. But yeah. you can't in turn one. But I can't in turn one. So that's only four turns. So max so is to kill, eight points. Unless you killed four characters, but that'd still only be 12 points. Yeah, so you can't max it. Can you get it more than once in one turn? Nope. You? It's if any, it's not per. Hmm. I don't think it's, it's very good. One. Yeah. It's an easy few points, I think, but... It's not very good. It's not, you're I'm not, not going to max that out, are you? No. Because if you're having to deep strike, because they've changed the upon Wings of Fire, so mm. it's not up and then drop instantly, it's now you up, remove them from the board, put them on the board the next turn, so you're missing a turn, ah, okay. you're going to be like missing a turn. Mm. Do, you, do you get what I mean? Because it's yeah, in the yeah, movement yeah. phase. In the movement phase, you pick them up and then the deep yeah. strike again. So turn, t turn. turn two, I drop, I yeah. could kill something, two points. Turn three... Start my movement phase, I take them off the board. Mm. Turn four, so I've lost two points there. Turn yeah. four, I drop them in, I delete something, get two points. Four points, that's literally it. You'd have to drop something every turn. You don't, you don't want to no. do that? It's, it's I don't a... get that one. If, if anyone sees that differently to yes. us, please let us know. But yeah, definitely let us know in the comments. because I, I don't see the benefits of that one, really. No, Not I... when there's better ones to choose. You've already said yeah. better ones than that. So the final one is a Battlefield Supremacy one, and it's Relentless Assault, and this one I really, really like. So I like this one, and I like the Blade of Sanguinius. I think Blade of Sanguinius is more fluffy and fun. Yeah. It will only work if your opponent's like, oh yeah, let, let, let us warlords fight. <laughs> but if you go to a tournament, someone's going to be like, well, I'm going to pick this character who's going to hide it back. But yeah. this one, Relentless Assault, I think you could do with like a tournament setting. You could use any any time. Mm. So you get four victory points if at the end of your turn... There's more Blood Angels units in your deployment zone than you have units in my deployment zone. Oh. Which is very fluffy. Yeah, I like that. So really you've good. got to have more units in my deployment zone yes. 
then I've got units of mine in your deployment yeah, zone. Yeah, I want to be in your deployment zone. Yeah. Um, I want to be getting stuck in. So I've got to either stop you from being in my deployment zone yes. or get into your deployment zone. Which, that's really good because that because you know I'm going to get four points for it, which is a lot. That's yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. for a secondary. You're going to have to scream because mm. I'm probably going to deep strike stuff because I'm blood angels. You would, surely. So you're going to want to scream, which means your units are going to be penned back. Mm. You're not going to want to push forward as much. I can get that no. mid-board control. I can take the other objectives. Absolutely. I really like it, not just for the points. And or in, in, the re in the reverse, you're yeah. forcing me to come into your deployment zone. Yeah, I can bring you which, bring you forward, stretch you up, like make your army stretched out. Yeah. So it's, it's good. I really like that one. That okay. one's just good, but also the mind game aspect. That's what I was just going to say. Yeah. Anything that makes your opponent think... Or makes your opponent act in a certain way. Purge the vermin is is all I'm gonna say. Absolutely, take you. You'll see it already. Yeah, I take purge the vermin every single time. It's I play so good friends, because it makes you have to spread out. Yeah, and you can't just stay in a ball. If you yeah. stay in a ball, you all saw what happened there. My murder crumbs just yeah crashed on you like a big wave, and it just and fell apart nothing, horribly. Nothing left but and you just kept ticking in. Yeah, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't get out. I didn't have enough maneuverability. Yeah. So that one with Blood Angels, like a fluffy Blood Angels list, you're going to want jump packs. You're oh, going to want yeah. deep striking. You're going to want bikers. You want fast attack. Oh, right. So it's perfect. Oh, six of those coming. So I'm excited. Um, I think it's perfect. Yeah. I, I can really see like that one. Those two, I could see you choosing them often. Yeah. The Relentless Assault all the time. Mm. Probably pick it all the time. What's really good as well, correct me if I'm wrong, but off the top of my head, I could take those two and then oofs. Oaths as well. From the Space Marine Codex. Which is pretty good. Yeah, that's what I'd do. It's really good. These, the sword one as well. I know you're saying that, yes, you could choose a character and yeah. hide them, but then you're forcing your opponent to hide one of their characters. That is also so true. Yeah. You're influencing what your opponent's yeah. doing. And any time you can do that, you're winning. Yeah. If, you, if you're already, before anything, no dice are rolled, no models are moved, and you're already in your opponent's head. Yeah. It's perfect. Because <clears throat> they're thinking about that when they're deploying, yeah. when they're moving, everything. So again, Purge the Vermin, yeah. you like, oh, I've got Purge the Vermin, and I'm like, well, I need to play a certain way now. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just going to take... Otherwise, giving up points. Yeah. When, there's no, when I, I can't, I need to... Yeah. It's, it's I love Purge good. because I get points for doing nothing. Yeah. If you don't, go, if you don't go into one of them quarters, yeah. I just get points. Well, I don't it, have to do anything. Which is sort of like, I mean, I have to do something with Relentless Assault, but it's something it's I want to do it. anyway. Absolutely. I want to be in there, and you don't want me in there, and you don't want to come towards me. No. Because I'm just going to, because who wants to fight Blood Angels in combat? Space Wolves. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Space Wolves, to be fair. Well, that's, that's it. Off the top of my head. Like everyone else, so you get plus one to wound, and yeah. you Space Marines, and you mm. get loads of attacks. No thanks. Especially not in turn four. Yeah, Savage Echo. Or so you, three, if you, you can go. You can go. Yeah, to, assault yeah. in turn three because you can skip. You can only. You can do two tactical on one, yeah. can't you? So it's good. Mm. It's really good. And it, uh, you don't even have to be like turn three. If I've got Sangre Priest nearby, use Blood Sorry. Chalice because that's changed now. Puts a unit in off the top of my head in six inch. Mm. Could be more. Could be less. Into assault mm. doctrine. It's really good. Yeah. And on top of all the apothecary stuff, you can do. So I can bring an Outrider back, I can heal someone. See, I have to use a Warlord trait to change doctrines. You can just do it with the... With the... Uh, with the oh, blood, blood Chalice? Blood Chalice. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good. Because it used to give plus one strength. So I was like, before this came out, I said to you, Blade Guard, hear, hear me out. Mm. Plus one strength for the Power Sword. Plus one yeah. strength for a Blood Chalice. Strength six. <laughs> plus one to wound in combat. I mean, you would Talk to me. Twos. That's amazing. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, they've changed it. But then when I've actually looked at it, I'm like, oh, I, yeah. I, 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 I like that. Get down with that. So then the next thing we've got in the book, literally on the next page, is the ability to make characters death company. Oh, this is my favourite bit. I love this. It's so it's good. So, so fluffy. So you used to pay a CP to make a character death company. They just got the Black Rage rolled, mm -hmm. which means they got a six up feel no pain and an extra attack when they charged. Yeah. So now, instead, you pay 20 points for a captain, 10 points for a lieutenant. I'm doing it on a lieutenant. Definitely. It's so good. And then when you do that, they gain the Black Rage, like they did before, so they gain all the caveats of that, that they can't do a action, they can't fall back. Yeah. But they get access to Death Visions, 
and they are amazing. So Sam's got the cards in front of him, so we'll go through them. So the first one is to slay the War Master, which I don't know how often you'll use it, but it's hilarious. Yeah. So basically, you're trying to cut, you're trying to kill Horus. <laughs> yeah, basically. It's it's amazing. So a model can only use this death vision if any enemy infantry character or monster character models are within engagement yeah. range of it. Fair enough. If a model uses this death vision, then instead of making any attacks for that fight, it's both sick. players roll off. If you win, select one of those enemy models, and that model suffers D3 plus 3 mortal wounds. Hell yeah! D3 plus 3. Just bottled straight up. I mean, that's... Any Necron character is basically dead. It, I, as long as not one of the it's a roll-off, so it's it's random, but like, if you're fighting a character who's a pain to shift, you've, they've been buffed to like high heaven, they've got invulnerables, you're just like, you know what? Yeah. I'm taking a punt. One of those custodies with the obnoxious yeah. 3 plus invulnerables. You, you haven't you aren't got your null zone off. You're yeah. like, do you know what, Trajan? My guy's gone mental. I'm going to cut you down. <laughs> yeah. Even Tom, it's Tom. Tom rolls a one. Because it's what he does. Sorry, Tom. <laughs> I roll a anything, a two. Yeah. D3 plus three. D3 See plus you later. Three. It's so good. That's so yeah. <laughs> Go on, can, Sam. Can any uh character can any death company character have death visions? Every death company character has death visions. So if you've got three death company characters. No. Ah. You can only use them once per game. You can't so be like you... But if you had three, could they yeah. have one each? No. And use each one? No, no, you can only use one. Okay. As far as I'm aware, because that would be mental. Unless, of course... So there is a stratagem. We'll come on to that. Should we do that now? We can do that now. Some segues in. Is it Visions of Sanguinius? It is. So you pay an extra CP or two? Uh, it's one CP. So you get to use two death visions in the same phase. Yep. Or if you've already used one, you can use another one. You can use another one. Which is amazing. And a combo that I really like, it ties into another stratagem. That's crazy good. Which is Angel Sacrifice. Mm. So every... You select a character of yours, and then every enemy model in engagement range has to attack the character. So then you just toggle Grace of the Angel. Free yeah. plus invulnerable. It's so good. So that's one we haven't spoke about yet. Yeah. So that's one we haven't spoke about yet. Which Grace is of the Angel, literally just use this death vision, you get a three plus info. For that turn. Yeah, so good. So is you can mold that the turn for the. Uh, oh, and then that turn. Oh wow, okay. End of the turn. That's really good. That's really good. So you combo that with Angel Sacrifice. Angel Sacrifice, so they have to attack him. Yes, if they're in engagement range. Bomb. See, if it's like a big blob, you're not going to get them all, because it's such a big blob, it's just people who are obviously within half an inch, Yeah. and then people who can fight because of that model. Does right. that make sense? Yeah. So like the model immediately behind them, they then count as being engagement range because they're going to attack because of them. So you could probably get a good... Ooh, Five or six models, depending on yeah. base sizes, which is pretty good. That is good. So I really like that. And then the final one... On the Bridge of the Vengeful Spirit. Yes. That's just... They're all named so well. So good. Just, I love so them. So cool. So, if the model uses this death vision, then until that fight is resolved... Yes. So does that mean, even if that goes over like three turns, it's until that fight ends? Or does the fight end and then a new fight starts? Ooh! So they normally says until the end of the turn or the end of the phase. This that, says until that fight is resolved. Someone let us know because you're right. I didn't catch that because normally it's till the end of the fight phase. Yeah, that says until the fight is resolved. So surely that's until either somebody falls back yeah. or dies. Yeah. I like that. So you get to add one to that model's attack characteristic for every five enemy models that are within six inches of it. So nids, arcs. If you're surrounded, suddenly you're just yeah. getting a bunch of extra attacks. Yeah. You just start wailing. <laughs> yeah. And each time that model makes an attack, you can re-roll the hit roll. You're already hitting on twos. Because it's on a character. Oh, that's true. So yeah. lieutenants are hitting on twos. Captains hit. The captains are hitting on twos. It's so good. That is really good. It's a hard killer. Yeah. It's. Oh. So do you have to, before a game, do you have to choose which... No, you just have access to all three. So you just... You pick the best one for the... For the moment. That's amazing. So you just go, yeah, I'll use that one. And then later on in the game, you'll be like, oh, I really want to get a 3 plus invulnerable. Right, I'll spend a CP and use visions. Oh, I mean, then, you've got to keep that one CP then. Cause yeah. Then, if yeah. you're not using both visions in a game, yeah. you've done something wrong. Yeah, they're so good. That's so good. And if you think about it as well, the the 
on the Bridge of the Vengeful Spirit. Mm. That's going to apply to hards. So captains normally come with a power sword standard, normally. Yeah. So that just cleaves hards. So he's yeah. already got like, what if you charge captain, he's got like six attacks. Yeah. So then you get an extra one for every five models, you're surrounded, it's mental. I mean, there's it's... so much synergy in this book. Yeah, like, already. Oh. And we're not even like getting into the, the, the meat of it. Yeah, it's so yeah. good. That, that's such a cool new little mechanic. It's, I love the death visions because when they previewed them, I was like, "What? What are these death visions like? Yeah. Is it like a new special rule that's just like universal?" And then I didn't expect it to be this. The, no. It's absolutely brilliant. They're like, so they're good. like super stratagems that are free. Yeah, yeah, basically, it's great. <laughs> yeah, it's good. <laughs> and to segue into stratagems, oh. we'll move on to the stratagems. So it's time for stratagems. So what I've done is I've scanned through, Sam's picked, gone through the cards and he's picked some of his favourites out. Yeah. And I've picked some of my favourites out and we'll see if the crossover and then we can just have a general go through as well. Yeah. So for the best stratagems, I think personally in the book, I really like Refusal to Die, which yes. is for Death Company. So if it's five models or under, it's one CP. If it's six or more, it's two. Five plus feel, no pain. Just yeah. improves it by one. Really good. It's so good. Combat, combo with trans. It's a huge CP sink, but if you roll so well, it will annoy the hell out of your opponent. Yeah. It's horrible. So making it a four plus to wound you. Yeah. And then you've got a five plus to ignore it. It's so good. On top of any saves that you might have. Yeah. Depending so, on the AP that they're using. Or it's... if they've got a psychic power on them that's giving them a, an invun. Yeah. Like Shield of Sanguinius, if you mm. put that on them. It's just extra hurdles for your opponent to get through. Yeah, and it gets rid of that, um, what we were talking about at the start, about how you know they do their job and then they tend to get blown yeah. off the board. Make them a little bit, a bit more survivable. I think it's worth the the, the CP sync, definitely. Yeah. I, re I really, really like if it. If you're investing in Death Company as well, why not? Yeah, you want to keep them alive. You want them to be around, do as much. Even a few Death Company models, because just of how Marines work, will yeah. throw out so many attacks. Yeah. It's ridiculous. If you could just keep an extra couple of models alive through sp spending false DP, I would do it every game. Oh yeah, definitely. Without a doubt. Next one that I picked is one that's changed, and I was really worried about it because it was one of my favourite stratagems, mm. but I actually really like the change. So it's Descent of Angels. Yes, I agree. Because it used to be a 3d6 charge, mm -hmm. which is amazing. Yeah, obviously. But they've changed it. So they've got rid of the 3d6 charge, and it's now, on the turn that you drop in, you spend a CP, so it's cheap, you get plus one to hit for the rest of the turn. That's incredible. I already love Inceptors and just need more reasons to bring them, because I love them. I drop down, squad of five, like I like to run, yeah. twin assault bolters, 30 shots, hitting on twos. Strength five, AP two. No, thank you. So good. <laughs> Clearing screens, you just... To be, not even screens, like that weight of dice on anything, it's horrible. Anything down. It's horrible. Yeah. So that's a really good, and because it's the turn, yeah, you then the charge. Turn. So I drop, I do that CP, 30 shots hitting on twos. I then charge, I get in, I'm going to be hitting you on twos, uh, and I also spend a CP for Hammer and Wrath. So I roll equal to a high year toughness for each model that I get in contact. Mortal wound. So good! Oh. I don't, you, you've skipped over a bit as well, the fact that you I've get to ignore all modifiers to the charge roll. Completely forgot about that, that's very that's just good. Just a little free little that bit. Just, just add it in, I completely forgot about that. Yep. That's so good. So if... No, right, if Go on. Tom used his blooming... That's, why, that's where I was going, ignore it. it. it totally ignore it, yeah. it's a modifier. It'd be no point in spending it, because it's a modifier, yeah. But could you... Mm. Would it be a bad play if he used that first and then you went, aha, now I'm going to spend the of Angels? When do you have to... Declare Descent of Angels. Use a stratagem at the end of your movement phase. That's when you bring your models in anyway. So yeah. you'd have already used it. Yeah, so you, yeah, you'd use that. Because he'd use just stop him from using Tangle. Because he'd use Tangle, because you wouldn't be able to move when you've deep struck, so he'd use Tangle for when you charge. When you charge. Yeah. So there'd be no point. No. So it does negate him he just gets rid of that trap card basically for him. He can no longer be like, ha, I got you. Yeah. And you're just like, yeah, whatever. It's fine. It's very good. Really for good. one CP as well, for the fact that it lasts a full turn. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, really. Two turn, like a full turn of just plus one shooting, plus one hitting in combat is amazing. Because you're Marines, so it's just twos. Yeah. <laughs> two shooting, twos combat is so good. And then another one is Visions of Sanguinius, which we've spoke about with the Death Vision, so you get to use an extra one. 
So yeah. we don't need to go over that. That's, you've got to use that every game. It's so good. And then, Unbridled Ardor, which is Ooh. a six-inch heroic intervention for Sangri Guard. Oh. Which is really good. Now, I used to have Sangri Guard, but I got rid of all my mini marines. So I won't be using this on the channel. But, those of you who still have kept the faith and have... Wait. Yeah, like, like Sam, and have your mini-marines. When you play them in Crusade, Unbridled Armor, Ardor. Unbridled Ardor, really good. Six-inch heroic intervention. It's so good. I think that's brilliant. I, I'm going to have to get some Sanguinary Guard. Yes, definitely. The models are really nice. They're really good, like, in combat. I need to do some research. Can Flesh Terrors take Death Company and Sanguinary yeah. Guard? All that Flesh Terrors does is it just gives you a couple of extra rules. Yeah. It makes it a little bit harder to take certain relics, because okay. you're a successor chapter, and you get your own set of, like, warlord traits. But you, everything else you have full access to. I'm literally only doing it to be different. Like, I just don't yeah. want to have another Blood Angels army, so why not be Flesh, flesh Terrors? Terrors are called Flesh Terrors but and Mental. On that point, they actually Ooh. get their own stratagem. Yeah, they've got a couple, yeah. yeah. Oh, this is the only one I've seen so far. Aggressive Onslaught. Go on. It's very similar to the one you were just saying. So yeah. when these guys do a pile in or consolidate, they can do it an extra three inches. Oh, that's really good. For one CP. And that's, is that any unit as well? Use a stratagem in the fight phase, select one Flesh Terror's infantry unit. That's really good. At the end of the phase, when it piles in or consolidates, do an extra three inch. That's so good. That just They're going to just keep tying stuff up. Yeah. You're going to get more models into combat. Well, this is the thing, because your opponent's so deployed much. in a way that obviously they're going to leave gaps, so you can't tie stuff up, but then you're like... Just six inch, oh, straight okay. into a tank. Six inches, boom. Yeah. Tag a tank, tag a, another unit so they can't fall back. Well, they fall back, got to shoot. Can't shoot even. It's so good. I like that. Then I have Chalice Overflowing, Ooh. which allows the Sangry Priest to do his Blood Chalice on two units. So two units can go into Assault Doctrine, and I think it's like one CP. Oh, it's it's so yeah, one CP, and the two units go in. It's really good. That's really good. So that's the you could do that at any point. So they could have been in tactical yeah. for when they were shooting stuff, and then you go right. You guys are now in Assault. I charge, will double check away. that very quickly for you. So let's have a look at the Sangry Priest. So the Sangry Priest, Blood Chart, in your command phase. Ah. So you pick a model, so it's Blood Angel's core or Blood Angel's character, excluding vehicles. Right. So even though Redemptor's a core, hmm. you can't you use can't Chalice use. on them. Right. And even though... Oh, you can use it on bikers, because they're not a vehicle. Yep. So within six inch, until the start of your next command phase, if the tactical doctrine or devastating doctrine is active for your army, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, the assault doctrine is considered to be active for that attack instead. Okay, so it is a bit of a trade-off then. Yeah. But, but if you put it on like a squad of assault marines, oh, yeah, you just throw them in. They're going to have pistols anyway, so Death if they're assault, then they get the extra minus one for the pistols. Put it on Death Company, throw them in. Yeah, yeah. minus two. Don't you? Yeah. Heavy bolt pistols. Nothing to, nothing to scoff at. It's pretty sour, right, isn't it? Absolutely. And then that was the last of my ones that I thought was really, really good. So I've got some okay. listed that uh, are okay. But before we move on, have you got one that's I've really good? I've got one extra that I picked out. This is just a fantastic utility stratagem. Go on. One CP, and you just get to use another psychic power with Mephiston. Oh, yeah, it's so whoever good. You're, whoever you're running. Yeah. So you get in, my first only gets to cast three psychic powers. Yeah, because he knows three plus smite, but he can only yeah. cast two. Where that, he can get three. Yeah, but I mean, one command point, there's always going to be a time where you're like, I really just need to get rid of that unit. I'll just spend one CP and cast a smite. Yeah. It, oh, it's really good. Beautiful. Or you're just like, oh, I've used utility. these utility powers. I really want this third utility power to go off. CP. Absolutely. It, it, it is really good. I missed that one, actually. That is a really, really good one. Yeah, it's quite basic, but powerful. Yeah, 1 CP. It's it's so good. So Fall on Fury is another really good one that I always used every game anyway. So it's yeah. 1 CP for a five-man squad, or 2 CP for six or above, same as Refusal to Die, and it yeah. means pre-game, you just move the 12 inch. Yeah. It's so good. That's brilliant. It's good because you can pl deploy aggressively. If I get first turn... I shunt them up the board. Yep. If you get first turn, I spend the CP anyway and I shunt them behind obscuring. Yeah. I'll put them in the middle. Hide behind some dense cover. Yeah. So it's Something. it's really good, like situational, so I really like it. And I that's one that 
I'll use most games, I think. Yeah. Because I'll run Death Company every game. Especially now that we've got the Primaris Death Company. So. Absolutely. And you can spend two CP to do it on a Dread. Shunting up a, a Death Company Dread would be pretty cool. So you could have your Invictor yeah. infiltrating halfway up the board. Yes. And then all of a sudden your Death Company Dread just, just storms up, pops up next to him. That's pretty cool. It's pretty good. Yeah. I like it. I like it too. Get that board control. Just... And you, I don't then want, you, I don't want to mess with an Invictor and a Death Company. No, and then you, that's it, you've got to react to that then. Yeah. This turn one charge, depending on the mission type, you know the mission type the from the mission pack, mm. which is right there. Is it search and clear, I think? Sweep and clear. Sweep and clear, where it's the Don't table quarters time. and then the big circle in the middle. Yeah. You're really close. You're, it's, I think it's 18 inches away. So it's less than the 24, so I deploy right on the edge. Yeah. I move 12 for free, yeah. six inch away. I move six inch again, I'm on you. Yeah, you got a snake eyes charge. Don't Stay, like it. There you go. It's horrible. But is anyone going to frontline against Blood Angels? I'm not. I'm not stupid. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> that's very true. But it, then again, it still gets me up the board quicker anyway, yeah. doesn't it? Oh, you could put six flame storm aggressors on the front line and then be like, but like charge me, come at me. <laughs> yeah, come on then. <laughs> it's, just, it's it's really good. I like mm. it. The okayish ones that I've got. What Angel Sacrifice, which is the one that I talk about with the combo with the Angel's Grace, where you get free up and vulnerable, you have to target him in combat. Yeah. So it's I put okay-ish, not brilliant, because it's, it's very situational. situational. Yeah. You, you've got to have that Death Company character in that spot, in that combat, and then use that combo. But if you pull it off, it's good. Yeah. So that's why it went into okay-ish. Red Rampage is okay. I guess. So Red Rampage, have you seen this one? No. So what it is, is you use this stratagem in your command phase if the Assault Doctrine is active. So turn three onwards. Okay. Until, the, until your next command phase, each time a Blood Angels unit from your army makes an attack with a pistol or a melee weapon, mm. each unmodified wound roll of six, you increase the AP by one. So in Assault Doctrine, you've already got an extra AP. Yep. So that would make it an extra minus two. So, so Chainsaw to be minus three. Yeah. So I put it, so it's good, so it's good, but I put it in the okay-ish because you have to be in combat in turn three. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? I do, yeah. So it's, that's why I didn't put it in absolutely, it's only one CP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, which is cheap. So that's why I put it in, do you get, do you get why I put it in? Turns into power swords, basically. Which is pretty good. And turns your power swords into melter swords. What I want to know is if you cast Unleash Rage, which makes attacks explode on sixes, mm -hmm. Those just count as extra hits, don't they? They don't count mm, as sixes. They don't count as extra sixes, no. Because that would be horrible. That would be dirty. That'd be gross. <laughs> but yeah, so I put that in okay cost. Yeah, no, I think that's good. It, it, if, it, if you pull it off, whew, Not every stratagem has to be an auto use every no, turn. No, because if, every turn. if every stratagem is an auto use, like if there's loads that are just like, I have to use this all the time, yeah. then the they're not stratagems are not balanced. balanced. Yeah. So Stratagems should be like, oh, if there's going to be a cool situation yeah. where I'm going to use that and it's going to be really effective. Yeah, Not which is like the Angel Sacrifice and the Death Vision, Grace the Angel. Yeah. If you, at that specific moment, it's perfect. Yeah. But the rest of the time, it's probably never going to come up. No. So. That's good, I like that. Yeah, it's a pretty cool one. And then my other one is Upon Wings of Fire, because this has changed. So it used to be 2CP, pick up model, just redeploy it for 2CP. Now yeah. it's 1CP which is better, but you have to remove your model from the board and they come in the next turn. I get okay. why they've done it. Like, I, I get it. I get yeah, it, because yeah. it's horrible. Because you could be like, yeah. once, it could be 2CP, pick him up, a Smash Captain, this is why, literally a Smash Captain, pick mm -hmm. up a Smash Captain, put it other side of the battlefield, spend a CP for Descent of Angels, he's got a 3, 3D6 charge again. Yeah. He's got Angels Wing Relic, he's re-rolling that 3D6 charge. I get, I get why they've changed it. I do. So, it's in the okay-ish because you... Because it's, it's been nerfed a bit. It's been nerfed. Uh, yeah. yeah. And like you said, if it ties, if you want to use it to tie in with that um, secondary, yes. it does, it's not great because you're going to keep missing a turn because you're off the board for a turn because it's the yeah. start of your oh, movement phase. Secondary. I, thought, I thought you meant the deployment zone. No, secondary. the dropping in and killing. Because right. for the deployment zone secondary. It's pretty good. It's good. It's good. It's you wait until later game. 
You pick him up from wherever he is, get, and drop him into turn my four, deployment Pick zone. him up, drop him in on turn five. In far corner, so you can't get him on your turn. Or if I've gone second, yeah. and I know I'm getting four points, yeah. it's pretty good. So but it's it's in the okay-ish. I think it's good. I think it's good. I think like anything that has effects on the table yeah. like that. Like, late game in 9th edition is so important. Yeah. We've seen it already in, in our previous games where yes. you'll have a unit in a certain position where it's just impossible to, to shift them yeah. or get that objective off them before the end of the game. Whereas, if you've got something like that where you can suddenly take a really good combat unit and just and go, get right, in. I'm going to go over there and I'm going to sort that out. Or, I'm going to bugger off over there. Yeah. So Claim that, you that objective you've you left unguarded. Yeah. Absolutely. I suppose the caveat is, is you can come it with the new change descent of angels which means you are then getting the plus one to hit again so yeah that's pretty it's good it's it's just because it's been nerfed so heavily that's why i dropped it it was yeah, always yeah, it no, was no, like I get, it was yeah. like top tier and then i've put it into like middle because it, again situational which is what stratagem should be absolutely yeah in the right situation you go that's amazing i'm going to use it yeah it shouldn't be I'm going to use it every game, which is literally what Upon Winds of Fire and Descent of Angels <laughs> used to be. To be fair, I'm going to use Descent of Angels every game, because I run yes. Inceptors, because I really like them. Inceptors are cool. And then the worst stratagem, or do you have some more, sorry, before we move on to no, the No, these are just one. ones that I'd kind of scattered out in front of me, see if anything jumped out of me. I did spot another Flesh Chair as well, Ooh, but it's, but it's just in a morale test if you fail it. Yeah. Um, until the end of the turn, you can subtract one from the combat attrition tests. That's not bad. It's all right. So if you're on below half strength, you subtract one. So you're only losing them on ones instead. Instead twos. So that's all right. It's not bad. Yeah. I just saw that it had flesh terrors in board and had a look, but again, it's one of them things where there's going to be a time where you can use that and that's yeah. going to win you the game. Yeah. Because oh. all of a sudden you're not losing that squad. Yeah. That's on that objective. So that, that's like we're saying. That's where stratagems. Are they amazing. should be situ situational. Definitely. Yeah. They shouldn't be use them all the time. No. I say that. After I said I'm going to use this set of angel all the time, <laughs> but to be fair, that's probably going to be two turns. You're, going to get, you're not going to use it every turn. Yeah. If there was one that was just give all of your units re rolls, well, you're going to use that every yeah. turn. Aren't you? Looking at you, veterans of the long war. Mm. Plus one to wound every turn. Mm. Double shoot with slanesh. Mm. Although we can't pick on chaos because no chaos. <laughs> they need Poor some love. Chaos. They need some love. <laughs> it's not good. The worst strategy in the book. Oh, Lucifer pattern engines. So one CP pre-game. A vehicle auto advances six inch. I, I eh, I'm never going to use it. It's, it is very meh. I'm never going to use it. I mean, you could put it on a redemptor to get him in position quicker. But I, you're sacrificing a turn of shooting. See, you don't have any. Let's have a look because it says any vehicle. vehicles with assault weapons. I think the battle predator, its flamers, are li which actually, to be fair, battle predator has it built in anyway. But I think it's mm. flamers are heavy, not assault. Yeah, I think they are. <laughs> Which just defeats the purpose. Yeah. If you could be like, I'm going to shut up the board, I'm going to flame everything. Absolutely. Mint. Yep. But you're not. You're going to zoom up and you're going to sit there and then they're just going to shoot you and you're going to get popped. Yeah. It's. it's I'm struggling it's to think of many assault weapons for Marines full stop. Never mind. So you yeah. can't use it on a Dreadnought no. and it can't be a model that flies. So that limits you to a Predator, a Land Raider. Mini Marine stuff. Flyer? But Flyers have got their own auto yeah. advance rules. So you can't do Impulsor, because it's got Fly. Oh, Rhinos though. Rhinos? That's not bad. Because I think way back, it used to just be a rule that Rhinos had anyway. Mm. And you got like extra movement on your advance. This one, way back. Like in the depths of 40k history. See, I can see it having a use now with rhinos. With rhinos, see, just I to think... get them in position, shoot yeah. you up the board. But it's—I don't know if it's worth the CP. You can use it more than once, but then you see in the TCP. Do you want to use it more than once? Not really. No. Not not for what it does. So, but, but again, there's a wait. You have to do it pre-game. Pre-game? No. You see it. No. Can't do it in the spur of the moment, it's pretty no. game. If there were a like, right, I need to get onto that objective, yeah. I'm gonna spend a CP and I can auto advance six inches. That would be better. Great. I'll the, do that. There's a big red NOS button and yeah. you just press the turbo and then the, it just <laughs> shoots off. Definitely. But it's not, it's literally before game. But then I suppose you can use it every turn. Yeah. I but don't still, I don't know, I don't no, like it. I don't get I'm, it. I'm not a fan. No. So that is our pick of the stratagems. Up next is the warlock traits. So now we're on to warlock traits. So I've picked out two that I really like. 
Mm -hmm. So I'll go through them and then you can give me your thoughts as well. So the first one is one that I actually really like. So it's Speed of the Primarch, start of the fight phase, if Warlord's in engagement range, he always fights first. Ooh, okay, that's powerful. He's really good. Always fights first. So, he just always goes. How would that work if somebody else had a Warlord trait that was also always fights first? That, I believe, is covered in the 40k rulebook. I uh, think there's like a, at the back of the book, there's like a rare exceptions hmm. bit, and I think it covers it in that. Okay. So I think that might then divert back to, I don't know for definite, but it might divert back to whoever's turn it is. Whoever's turn it is. Whoever's turn if it is. the model who's striking first had charged previously. Yeah. Stuff like that. So that's really good. Mm. The next one is Artisan of War, which the Warlord can be given special issue war gear relics. So you've got the Adamantium Mantle, which I think is a 5-up feel no pain, which is all right. Yeah. You've got Artificer Armor, so 2-up save, 5 plus and 4 is yeah. it? You've got Master Crafted Weapon, so you increase the damage by 1. And the AP one by 1 as well, maybe? I know the damage goes up by 1. I'm not sure. And then Digital Weapons, which is you just make an attack and if it hits it does a mortal wound. Lovely. Which is, which is all right. Yeah. And then, mm. so, what do you think of that one, actually? I like it. Because, like, you could just slap your artificer armor on a, a lieutenant. Yeah. So it's got vulnerable, then. Two up, five up. It's pretty good. It's all right. Mm. Or one of your librarians. Librarians have always got rubbish armor. Yeah, they never have an invulnerable save no, unless you've got power that and, gives them it. Yeah, so, again, slap artificer armor on That's a good idea, actually. I didn't think of that. I quite like that. Mm. And then the third warlord trait is Soul Warden. So what this does is, when a friendly Blood Angels unit is within 6 inch of your Warlord, and every time they lose a wound of the result of a mortal wound, on mm. a 5-up they ignore it. So psych if you're going against a psycho heavy army, I feel like that's good. Yeah, definitely. That's really good. So like Grey Knights, Eldar... Chaos. Yeah. Anything that's just going to throw loads of mortal wound output at you, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. It's my least favourite phase, the psychic phase. It's, wait, come, if, it, weirdly enough, obviously it's Soul Warden, so it's meant to be like, it's like an Iron Will, so it's against Psychic, mm. but that covers like planes doing bombing runs as well, weirdly yeah, enough, true, because they're mortal wounds. Yeah. It's like my Sun Shark Bomber from my Tau that does like mortal wounds on a 4 plus. Yeah, anything that explodes. Yeah, you can shrug it off. It, 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 I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Then we've got Heroic Bearing, which adds 3 inch to the... Rights of Battle, Tactical Precision, Chapter Master, Spiritual Leader, Auras. So it puts it to 9 inch. So it's pretty yeah, good. That's good as well. Uh, this Warlord also has the following ability. While a friendly Blood Angel's core unit is within 9 inch, plus one leadership. Mm. So, whatever. The, the buff to the Aura is good. Yeah. That's always, especially if you're a Chapter Master. Ugh. Oh, it's, it's pretty good. Or a Chapter Masters. And it works on the Chaplains as well. Because okay. it's the Spiritual Leader. That's, that's alright. Hmm. It's not too bad. Then, this is the other Warlord trait that I really like. So it's Gift of Foresight. In a turn, you can reroll a hit, a wound, and a save. Every turn? Every turn. So my turn and your turn. And one of each? One of each. Not pick one of the three? Nope. You can... Re In each turn, you can roll, reroll one hit, one wound, and one save. So good. That's it's really, really good. That's like getting three free CP every turn. Yes. It's amazing. You see that? That's an auto take, I yeah. think. Yeah. Is it just for that warlord though? Just the warlord. But it's safe you're rocking a smash captain, or mm. you've built a Primaris version of a smash captain, and you just want to YOLO in. I really like it. Yeah. The amount of times that you're going to lose a character and you've already spent a CP and you're like, oh, I wish I had spent a CP because I could re-roll this. You could just do it. Put it on a Chaplain Dread. If it's a character, yeah, you could take a Warlord trait. <laughs> That'd be cool. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be really cool. I really like it. Yeah, there's some there's some scope there. Ah, it's really, really good. You could, if you, because you can do the stratagem to get two Warlord traits, so you could take Speed of the Primarch and then Gift of Foresight. So you always fight first, and then you re-roll, hit, wound, save. No thanks. It's pretty spicy. <laughs> so the final one is Selfless Valor, which is if you can perform an inter... So you can perform a intervention, six inch. 
That's all right. That's, that's, yeah, it's yeah, good. It's useful, especially if you've got a squad of uh, sanguinary guard who can also intervene six inches. That's true. Yes, you go in with your leader, and then they use selfless ardor, and then they pile in as well. That's, that could be pretty good. Yeah. I th- it's it. Yeah, it's all right. The there's two that I definitely would run: options there, I'd, definitely. Speed of the Primarch and Gift of the Foresight are the clear winners for yeah. me. So Flesh Terrors actually get three of their own. Ooh. So you get Merciless Butcher, which is each time the Warlord is selected to fight, you get one additional attack with your melee weapon for every five models within three inch. So a maximum That's of cool. three. That's, yeah. So a Horde, like a Vox ta- or Hormagaunts or whatever, yeah. you're definitely getting an extra three. So you're going to be like ten attacks for a captain. Chop Assault, plus one yeah. to six. Probably if you have like a chainsaw or something else, get an extra attack. Yeah. Then plus three. It's pretty good. It's not bad. Of Wrath and Rage. So each time you make a melee attack, an unmodified hit roll of six scores an additional hit. That's really, tasty. Really good. That's very tasty. That, they have Flesh Terrors have a special relic, which is a special chainsaw called Severer. And I believe on a five plus, it does a mortal wound in addition. Really? It's either an addition or it cancels it, can't, like stops that attack, and right. you do it. You do it a model wood, but we'll check that. So that could be really good. That sounds. I like that. that be really good. <laughs> Cretation born. Each time this warlord, I probably pronounced that wrong, but each time this warlord declares a charge, it's Cretation, isn't it? Yeah, Cretation born. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a planet. That makes sense. <laughs> each time this warlord declares a charge, enemy units that were targeted cannot fire on Overwatch. You can't Ooh. set to defend, and you can re-roll your charges. Okay, Actually, that's the one I'll take. There's some really... All of the <laughs> Flesh Terror ones are They're really good. Nice. I yeah. really like them. I love one of each. <laughs> hey, you can with Blood Angels, pay a CP, you can have two. You just have to pick one to leave at home, but... Yeah, I'll put that on somebody else. So, got them all. <laughs> so good. The Flesh Terror ones are really, really good. And that, with a Relic as well, oh, it'd, be so, yeah. it'd be horrible. So I'm thinking for my Crusader army, to just do pure Death Company. Death Company. Yeah. The Crusader rules for Blood Angels are amazing. Mm. They're so fluffy. It's all about, you can lose just people out of squads to like the Black Rage and stuff. Nice. It's really cool. It's really good. We'll have to cover that separately when we start. When we start, Crusade. yeah. Crusade. It is coming. Yes. In the new year, Back end of December, New Year, we're going to start Crusade. So there's seven or eight of us in it? Yeah. So there'll be a lot of content coming. Get painting if you're watching. Yes, you know who you are. Or building Byron. <laughs> I'm on to you. Next up, we have the Psychic Powers. It's literally on the next page. So, one of my favourites, Quickening. You get an extra D3 attacks, and you get to reroll your advance and your charge. That's amazing. Put it on the fist on, send him up the board. Happy days. This Mephisto on beat stick idea, I'm getting behind it, I like it. I love it. it, he's probably going to die, but I'm literally just going to slingshot him up the board. He's already dead, isn't he? I'm sure he's like... He, he, he cheated death. Half dead. He is a vampire. Yeah. But yeah. those are just rumours. Don't tell the Inquisition. <laughs> Next one is Unleash Rage, which has changed. So it used to be, pick a unit, plus one attack for every model, which was really good. Too good, I think. I think this is better. Oh. So this is a blessing, cast on a six, 12 inch, pick a unit, six is to hit in combat, explode, automatic extra hit. I think that's better. So just a six, an unmodified hit roll of a six scores an additional hit. Yes. But the amount of attacks you could be pumping out. I I think it's better than, I think it's better than old Unleash Rage. Yeah. I, I think it is. I don't know the math, maybe the math says I'm wrong. If you were what, to math it, it out, before? just plus one attack. Just plus one attack. So if you had ten models, you'd get an extra ten attacks. An extra ten attacks. Whereas now, with ten models, ten assault marines, you rolled in sixty dice. Wait, no, ten death, 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 com- <laughs> death company, you roll in sixty dice. So if they ten charge. death company, sixty dice. So free base, chain sword, shock assault, black rage. So yeah, sixty dice. Assault doctrine? Oh god, Sam. Seven dice if they're in assault doctrine. So seventy dice if they're in the assault Ten doctrine. Shrimp, so between sixty and seventy dice. So they would have then gone up to seventy or eighty with the old. Let's stick rage. with let's stick with sixty. Sixty, it's not assault doctrine, right? Okay, so sixty old unleash rage, you go up to seventy. Mm-hmm. New unleash rage, every six is just an extra hit automatically. It's better. 
It is better because yes, the extra hit gets you ten extra attacks, attacks, which might not hit, which might not hit. But statistically, if you're rolling sixty dice, you're gonna get ten sixes. Yeah, which is just an extra which ten. Which then hits. becomes twenty, an extra ten hits that automatically hit. You know, having to roll the extra yeah, yeah, ten, yeah, not rolling. It's better. I think it's better. Miles better. I yeah. love that. It's really good. That's really good. And then if you want to get crazy and talk about being in Assault Doctrine, yeah. so then you're getting 70 attacks. <laughs> That's mad. Yeah, I don't know what to say. It's crazy. That is it. just, just delete something. Just it, bananas. Don't touch that and it's gone. This is why they got rid of the anyone can fight twice roll. Mm. Can you remember when my death company like tore apart a Storm Raven? In a really, yeah. from like a couple of years ago, we played a game. And I was like, oh, it's on like two wounds. I, I spent CP and you were just like, just remove the model. Don't roll, <laughs> just get rid of it. I did. That was the one and only time I took a Storm Raven. <laughs> All my death company had jet, oh. jet packs and thunder hammers. It was mental. It was gross. So the next one is Shield of Sanguinius, which has changed. Used to be a bubble. Now it's pick a model within 18 to get a 5 up in front of Good. Yeah, it's all right. Not bad. Yeah. Blood Boil, this is one of those weird, like, pseudo smite ones. Mm, so, witch fire ones. Yeah, so you pick someone with an 18, 2d6. Uh, if it's higher than the toughness characteristic, they take d3. If it's uh, more than double, they just take a flat 3. And uh, da -da 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 -da. let's have a look. I think you can pick someone. Yeah, select one enemy unit. That's within 18 inch, so you don't, it's not like smite where you have to be like, I have to hit the closest. You yeah, yeah you I suppose you can, pick, you, can pick a you can pick a character if they're within 18 and you can see them. Because look out, Sarah is only shooting. Yeah. So it could be useful. It could be good. Maybe. There's others I think I'd take before it. Yeah. But, I mean, it's, it's got potential. Bloodlance, you just, I don't think you're ever going to see anyone take. No. So watch out six, then you draw an 18 inch line, every unit it passes through and a five plus to take a ball wound. Yeah. It, it's never been taken. I used a similar power last time. Yeah. It? Would, it, or, would it automatically? I think mine automatically did a mortal wound. Yeah. Which is better. Yeah. But this is on fight up. It's, it's not very good. Is it every model? Or no, it's unit. unit. Every unit. Yeah. It... Oh no, I lie. For oh. each model. Oh, it's each, right, it's each, now. That is well, that's huge. Better. That's a big difference. So mine, I think it's just a generic Space Marine one. I suppose if you hit hard, that are like going through terrain and they're all crumped together and you do it through, but you still fight, I have small wounds. It's very situational. It could be good. It's an 18 inch line. That's a big line to so be fair. if you're playing against Tau, who are backlining and yeah. getting into a death ball, you're getting everything. Again, it's one of them, it's situational, situational. which yeah. is good. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I know you have to pick it before a game, but there's going to be times where you're going to hit loads. Yeah. There's going to be a time where you only hit a couple, but th it could... I think the other ones will get picked because it's not... The other ones aren't swingy. Yeah. But I like aggressive psychic powers. I like the idea of them going out there and unleashing their psychic rage on people. Well, if you want aggression, can heads pop. I've got the final one for you. Ooh. How does a pair of giant blood-coloured wings sound? Tasty. Wings of Sanguinius. Ooh. So six up. So I think it's easier to cast them before, which is amazing, because I think it was a seven. So if manifested, this psychic can make a normal move or fall back as if it were the movement phase. In addition, your move characteristic for that move goes to 12 and you gain fly. <laughs> so what? hear me out. Mephiston. Right, Mephiston is quickening plus Wings of Sanguinius. Move him 18 inch. Yep. You get to charge, you get to re-roll your charge, he gets an extra d3 attacks on the charge. That's mad. Just he's hitting on twos, wounding on nearly everything on twos, because he's strength 10, because of his sword. Yeah. My fist on missile, it's a thing. I'm doing it, double M. <laughs> I'm going to try it, and he's probably going to whiff, <laughs> and I'm going to roll like six ones, but I'm going to do it. When he's going to try and take the Catan's head. That's it, yeah, and I'll just fluff the other thing and it'll be horrible. <laughs> or I'll fire my plasma pistol before I overcharge it and blow myself up or something ridiculous. Because that's, that's an annoying thing. He's a special character who's got a plasma pistol, and if he mm. overcharges it, rolls one, he dies. It's like 190 points. You just can't overcharge. You it's can't do it. It's not worth the risk. 
So I've done it before with Azrael. <laughs> oh god, he just pop. Yeah, like oh, I just thought he's got rerolls. Yeah, the book can overcharge my famous last words. Even with a gift of foresight, didn't see that coming. No. Literally everything that was bubbled around him lost their four Oh people, no! Lost their re-rolls. I lost my warlord. Oh no, that's horrible. <laughs> I vowed to never ever do it again. I've never taken a character, like a special character. So when I, in our game, it'll be the first time I've ever used a special character. Exclusive! It is an exclusive, it's world first. Because <laughs> I, I like them fluff-wise, but I don't normally like them in the game. No, I do think they've, I think they've toned them down a yeah. bit. I think special characters of old. This this is where I end up insane. using the fist on, and I'm like, every game, <laughs> I'm going to shoot him up the board. You know what? He's painted him so well that I would, I Thank would you, be surprised sir. if he, if he shows him every game. I'm very happy with how he's come out. He looks, he looks beautiful. Excellent. He looks really good. And but your, uh, who's the other guy? The my chaplain. Chaplain. Yeah. Have you got special uh, litanies and stuff? So, in Psychic Awakening... We had, I think every army that got a special litany in Psychic Awakening, they've now lost it. Oh. Because, I could be wrong, but the Blood Angels one was ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> it made all my melee attacks minus 4 AP. Okay, I'm glad you've lost that. 70 attacks at minus 4 <laughs> AP! It was like Litany of Devastation or something mental, and it was like, hello boys. Yeah. It's better than a Power Sword. Yeah, we lost that. I Good. think Space Wolves had one as well, and they lost theirs. Um, I can't remember who else got special litanies, but they, they got rid of them. I'm trying to remember if Dark Angels did. The Blood Angels one was mental. Yeah, mine, like my, I'm sure it was... I could be wrong, but I'm sure it was minus four in combat. Sit for an AP, which is horrific. I'm glad it's gone. It, it's bananas. To be fair, the litanies you get anyway, because I think there's a litany that's like plus two to charge. That's good. Which is really good for Blood Angels. Mm. So it's good. But now we're on to relics. So we've lost two relics that I always took. Oh. You'll recognise these. Banner of Sacrifice. Always, yeah. Primaris Ancient. Banner, Banner of the Sacrifice. Bubble of the Five Up Feel No Pain. So good you took it twice once. Yes, so I took two banners <laughs> twice. And I took the Banner of Sacrifice. It's called, what's the word? Efficiency. Redundancy. Redundancy. <laughs> Not efficiency, it's a bad way to spend points. The second one is Angel's Wing, which actually now has moved out of relics and into Crusade relics. So I noticed Ooh. that. So it's a relic you can't take anymore. So it used to be you could be overwatched mm -hmm. and you could reroll your charges. So you used to have it on Smash Captain. Yeah, I'm glad that's gone as well. Yeah. So it were a bit bananas. But like, people just abused the Smash Captain, that's why. Yes, Smash Captains are so just nerfed. ridiculous. Yeah. Especially if you took like the Hammer of Baal, which is a Thunder Hammer that doesn't have a minus to hit. Yeah. Times two strength, minus three AP, flat three damage. You give him the old it's basically a mace of absolution. Yes. And you give it in the old codex, the Artisan of War didn't give you access to special issue war gear, it improved your damage by one. So you made the Hammer of Baal damage four. Uh, so you just yeah, walk, up, talk about that, you walk up to a titan and you now. just slap it and it just falls over it, it's pretty grim so the relic that I think you might like because if you're going to do flesh terrors mm. is the flesh terrors relic mm. so it is called severer and it is a flesh terrors model equipped with an Astartes change sword so it replaces that so it's range melee type melee obviously it's plus 2 strength nice minus 2 AP Ooh. Flat 2 damage, Ooh. but each time an attack is made with this weapon, on an unmodified wound roll of 5+, plus, the target suffers one mortal wound in addition. In addition. It's so good. That... In addition? In addition. Right, so, who can I put that on? Anybody who's got a chainsaw? Yes. So what... Is it going to be a character? Uh, anyone who can take a relic, so yeah. So what character would have a chainsaw? Let us have a look. So it's probably... Is there a... Ah, uh, no, it's not the Space Marine book, is it? No. Is there a Space Marine captain who just has a chainsaw? There probably is. is I mean, there's a mini Marine that just has a chainsaw. Yeah. So, I don't know about a Primaris one, but a mini... They're still going to have, like, five attacks base. Mm. Plus one for a chainsaw. Yeah. Plus one for Shock Assault. Make him Death Company. Eight. Then make it Assault Doctrine. Nine. That's what I'm talking about. That's 
That's horrible. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Damage 2, AP minus 2. It's really good. Unless it's Assault and then it's minus 3. Yep. And Strength plus 2, so you're going to be Strength 6 minimum. So you're going to be winning stuff on 2s. most stuff on 2s. Plus Mortal Wounds on 5s. In addition. In addition. That's incredible. It's spicy. That's like the... What was it for the Ultramarines? The Teeth of Terror or... Oh god, yeah, there's... Yeah, yeah, the Chainsaw. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, I mean... Yeah, that's. I thought you might like that. I'm very much like that. It's really it's, good. I'm gonna have to think of a like a funky chainsaw that I can build now to represent the Severo with like special relic, dripping off it and stuff. Yeah, it's it's cool. I like it. We'll have to see if we can get a Primaris Captain with chainsaw. I'm sure there's got to be one. Yeah. If anyone out there has a good idea of who that relic could be put on, yeah, please let me know. Or like a cool kit bash we could do for it. Like yes. what what chainsaw or like. Similar weapon we could get off a different kit and then you could use that yeah. and kit bash one. Because that's what I want to do for Crusade anyway. I don't yeah. want to buy anything new. I've got boxes full of spares and I've got old mini kit bash that them. Yeah. I just want to I want to build something specific yeah. for Crusade. And, and like full of flavour and kind yeah. of Yeah, give them a name, build, build a story. That's what it's all about because it's narrative. I love narrative. It's so good. I'm Can't excited wait. to play my guard. So yeah, Can't spoiler, wait. I'm playing guard. Yeah. Um, already regretted it because... <laughs> I love playing the game, but painting, I'd, I've never really been into painting, so I'm obviously having to paint a lot of infantry. Although, to be fair, painting my guard in the colour scheme I've done, I can probably smash out like a full 10 man squad in like two hours, two, yeah. three hours, which is really good. Yeah, we, we are massive fans of contrast. It's, so it's changed our lives. Like, yeah. Neither of us are, are huge painters. And now. We've never been massively into paint, it, but. And it looks good. I absolutely love it. Yeah, I love it. And it actually looks good. I think so. I mean, you guys, if you disagree, probably wouldn't be watching. Yes, that's so, true. I think they look good on the table. Wait till you see my Mephisto. Um, it looks beautiful. He does. It looks radiant does. with his lovely golden hair. I can't wait. Him and his chaplain. I love my chaplains. So I, you've got to bring good. them both. I'll be bringing them both and I'll be bringing no, the Outriders. I'll rematch. So it's going to be good. Mephiston's going to try and take down the Nightbringer. I'm feeling it. I can't. I want oh, the Nightbringer so. to be amazing. I, when I started playing Necrons, the night this he used so to be scary. The Nightbringer was a monster. This is like fourth, fifth edition, oh isn't my it? God. I just, remember him being horrible, and he, he used, used to be unbeatable. Like, when he likes 500, 600 points, I can't remember. He wanted something mental because he was ridiculous. Just remember him being a beast. We yeah. used to do the like one v one, like characters. character death match. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, one of my mates, Hive Tyrants, was the champion for years, and then the Nightbringer came along and just. Absolutely slapped him. Him. And that was it, he was the king forever. And now he retired the king. And now he went through some bad phases, not doing very much. Yeah. Now I think he's got potential again. I keep seeing out there that he's amazing. I think I just played him wrong. Maybe. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play him better, he's gonna have his little scarab bodyguards and yeah, okay. stuff like that. He's gonna have a bit of spite uh, smite spam stopping. Interesting. Okay. That's why I went wrong last yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I just, I literally advanced a librarian round. I literally, there was a librarian, I was like, no, you need to be over there. And he just ran as fast as he could. He literally got in because of the plus one from Blood Angels as well. Yep. So if it was anyone else, he wouldn't have got in. He got in and I just went, zap. And, and then, then he, that just lost me the game yeah. because if the Nightbringer goes down without doing very much, yeah. that's a quarter of your hand. He did like a smattering oh, of mortal wounds, but it weren't yeah. great. It, yeah. Have you got the Such Void Dragon? Dragon. I do have the voice. To carry on the tangent, because he looks amazing. I do. I've got so much stuff in my to-do pile. The Silent King, the <sighs> Void Dragon, another half of Indomitus. Silent King, Mephiston, a Pix sang Sanguinary Blade, and we just have a jaw. <laughs> and it'll end for horribly yeah, for, for me. Sure. Did you get to bring his two Maneas? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Because he because he just shoot you before you get anywhere near me. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's like AP minus five or something insane. Oh, so good. That's horrible. I know. I can't. I need to get him done. I can't wait to paint him. It looks, it looks so cool. It looks, it looks really good. It's like they're doing Age of Sigma. Age of Sigma. Every army has a big centerpiece model mm. that makes you want to collect that army. And they've started doing it in forty k. So you've got Silent King. Yeah. Sisters have Saint Catherine, which looks yes. amazing because oh. they're just loads of sisters carrying that like sarcophagus. Oh, it's so good. So cool. It's really cool. But we've had the vault got their own little piece of terrain as well. Yes, I like the so Death Guard are getting the like plague furnace and Gene Steeler's got like the drill which looks so cool. Yeah. Necron's got the cool pillar obelisk they, things. Yeah, they look ace. I've got a bunch of those that again I need to Marine's build got a and paint. bunker? 
Yeah, Hammerfall. I, I guess it, you, could, you could just use it as terrain. You don't Absolutely. have to use it. I've got one coming. But I think it might be on my Christmas list. Yeah. So we'll get that painted up, get that on the channel. I like it. My just... Christmas list consisted of more goblins. Ooh. So New Year, there will be Age of Sigma. We have gone off on a mega tangent here. But it's yeah, good. I might just have to cut all this bit and put it into a podcast <laughs> later on. I think I will. <laughs> but one of the final things that we will talk about is special issue war gear. So you've got your adamantium mantle that I mentioned earlier on. I yep. was right. Five plus feel, okay? Lovely. Art fire armor, everyone knows and loves. Yep. Master crafted weapon is plus one damage. Yep. Digital weapons, extra attack, it hits. Mortal wound. Lovely. Here's the spicy one. So, there's a stratagem where you can pick a model that's got sergeant in its name. So I'd pick the sergeant of my assault squad. So it's one CP. They get access to special issue war gear. So then what I'd do is I'd give him this. So this is called Quake Bolts. So, he gets to fire one shot with his bolt weapon. So his bolt pistol. Okay. If he hits, what happens is, is basically, he fires a shell, it explodes mid-air, sends out a shockwave, knocks the unit down, and then we just dog pile <laughs> you. Which means, plus one to hit in combat. Ooh. So assault marines, bucket loads of attacks, hitting on twos. Probably wounding most things on twos. Because blood angels, or threes. It's, it's, it's really good. Is it wasted on assault marines though? Are they not going to be dropping in anyway? No, because it's on foot, because I'm Primaris. Ah. Yes, I... In, right, yeah, assault intercessors. And I, do, cause I was thinking old school assault marines with the jetpacks. Oh, they can still work on those because they're deep but strike. But then you'd, you'd use the other thing on that instead, wouldn't you? Cause for the plus one to hit. For the plus one to hit for them, yeah. yeah. But that, on foot. And obviously, unfortunately, Def Company can't have a sergeant. So you can't do it with Def Company because that'd be horrible. No, but now I'm, I'm ticking back. Blade we guard? About before. Blade guard? If you don't Southern have the blade guard ancient, you don't have to pay points for him, you just spend yeah. a CP. They're hitting on twos. It's every, it's, it's not mm. just that one unit. It's every everything that's attacking them because they're on the floor. Ah, right. So you could set up like a mega combo. Yeah, it's gross. Ooh. See now I'm picturing an impulsor full yeah. of either assault intercessors or blade guard with the one that we totally disregarded, the stratagem of the extra six inches to advance. Yes, because that can move advance, and then the guys can get out. It's got fly. Can't do it. Damn you, GW! <laughs> I thought I had an idea. It would have been, yeah, because if the Impulsor advances, can they still disembark and then charge? Because I know, I know the Impulsor, you can move <laughs> it, disembark, charge. Yeah, I just assumed that you could advance. But maybe you can't do it if you advance. I don't know, but I need Impulsors, because they work yeah. perfectly for Blood Angels. Absolutely. But Blade, like Blade Guard, just give a Blade Guard Sergeant the Quake Bolt. Yeah. Do they have guns? Yeah, they've got heavy bolt pistols. Oh, cool. So it's just one shot, three up. If I hit, I'm hitting you on twos in combat, I forget it. With everything that attacks that unit. I like that a lot. It's really like good. Lot. Really good. And then what else have we got? Angel Shard, which is a power sword. Plus two, strength, minus four AP, damage. Two. So it's kind of like the Burning Blade, but not as good, because I think Burning Blade is minus five. five. I think it's just plus one AP, isn't it? In a normal power sword, strength plus... Oh, it's only strength plus one into Plus one is power. So you get an extra strength and an extra AP. Yeah. But the Burning Blade from the Marine much. book, I think, is like minus five. So can you still take anything you want from the Space Marine book? Yeah. So you could you take still got access Space to Space Marine Relic, Warlord Trait... Well, yep, Psychic Powers, I believe. Yeah, Psychic Powers, because you, your Librarian is from the Space Marine book, unless you're yeah. taking a fist on. And then if you take the fist on, he has obviously has to use the sanguinary powers. Of course. But if you take a space marine librarian, you can use either or. So you can still have null zone. Yes, but if you pick null zone, you couldn't have null zone and then one power from another one. No, you'd have to take them all from. Because what you'd do is swing the sanguinious null zone. You just fly him in <laughs> like an EMP. <laughs> just like turn off, and then you just shoot everything. It'd be horrible. Tom's at home crying. Yeah, Tom's like no, 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 no. And then the final one is eh? Flesh Render Grenade. It sounds amazing. But it's literally just a grenade. It's D3. And it renders flesh. It's strength 5 minus 3 AP, 2 damage. Like, it's not bad. It's, I'd rather take Quake Bolts. It's only grenade D3. Yeah. yeah. Why? Yeah. 
is why. So Gleaming Pinions, I've seen actually, that wasn't the last one, there's one more that I missed. So if, if they've got a jump pack, to be fair, they can charge if they fall back, Ooh. and they can reroll failed charges. So oh, it's kind amazing. of like the Angel's Wing. Is that just for one guy? Though? One guy, yeah. Mm -hmm. So smash captains. Again. So you could be like, I get in, smash some stuff out, fall back, charge into another unit. That's horrible. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty grim. And then we've just got the characters. So obviously we've talked, well, the Crusade rolls, which we won't we won't get into because we'll get into that when we start playing Crusade. Yeah. But you'll love it. They're full of flavour. They're oh, really gosh. so good. We've got characters, so for you we've got Flesh Terrors, Gabriel Seth, which I don't know if you've seen. I've not, no. So I'll let you have a little little look at him. So he's got like a big two-handed chainsaw. I think he can attack twice in the combat phase. He's pretty spicy. Oh, you can't give relics to a named character, can you? No, he's got a special. Well, a special, anyway, the Blood Reaver. Yes. Ooh. Strength times two, AP minus two and three. Three damage. And he has so strength eight. Five attack space? AP minus two and three damage and five attacks. And he, he fights twice, because at the end of the combat phase you pile in again and fight. What? Yeah. Where Lord is of it? Slaughter. And that's something else. That's six has increased damage by one, which is pretty good. It's pretty good. Oh, right, I'm gonna have to make this guy, I think. Yeah, you could kick Basher and like Gabriel Seth. Definitely. He's an absolute beast. Whirlwind of Gore. That's it. Why has everything got such a cool name? Whirlwind so, of Gore. It's so good. So he gets to fight again. For free. Yep. He's pretty good. I'll take him. Dante is... Eh, he's alright. He's not amazing. Yeah, he's not a bad counterweight. He's a terrible, terrible <laughs> man. Sanguinor. Interesting, because you can... He starts off the board, and then you just heroically intervene into a combat. Because nice. he just turns up to save just people. Pins. Yeah, which is pretty cool. It's funky. I like funky like rolls. Yeah. Uh, brother Corublo, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, he's just a funky... Corbulo? Corbulo? Yeah. There's funky Sangre Priest. Nothing amazing. No. Mephiston. I'm going to use him. So I'm gonna let... Talk us through Mephiston. So, cause... here we go. So, movement seven. It's awesome. That's random. Yeah, it's a bit weird. <laughs> so, if I, if I fly, I can move 19? It's pretty spicy. Weapon skill two. Holistic skill 2. Strength 5. Nice. Toughness 5. Very nice. 6 wounds. 5 attacks. Leadership 9. Don't need it. It's a character. 2 up save. He then has plasma pistol. Whatever. Yeah. Vitaris. His big, big sword. Mm -hmm. So it is strength times 2. So strength 10. Strength 10. Quick maths. Minus 3 AP. D3 damage. So. Uh, I'd, I'd prefer flat 2. But whatever. Why GW? So he gets Angels of Death. So like Shock Assault and everything and all that. Lord of Death. So he's got a 5 up. Feel no pain. Ooh. He also has a Psychic Hood. So he gets... An extra deny. Yeah. If you're manifesting a Psychic Power within 12 inch, he gets plus 1 to deny. Which is alright. Standard. Then he's a Psychic, so we get 2 powers. He can cast 2 in the Psychic phase and he can deny 2. Which is pretty good. Ooh. Denying 2 is cool. And he knows Smite and free powers from the Sanguary Discipline. So I will just take Wings, Quickening, and Unleash Rage. Yeah. Or... And you probably use all three with the And CP. all three. And then you spend the CP. You fly him up. You fall up. Fall on Fury. Death Company. Yeah. So they've got pre-game moves. They've shot off up board, so you need someone up there. The fist on flies up. Cast Quickening on himself. Spend the CP. Unleash Rage. They both pile into, into something. He, get, he would have, with Quickening... He'd have six normally, he gets an extra D3, he could have nine attacks. You could cast Unleash Rage on the Fiston as well. Yeah. <laughs> so then every attack he does explodes. He's a weapon. Um, He's, that's an absolute missile. I would just send him like a missile up the ball. What is his points cost? This is the question. Mm, I'm gonna guess 190. 155? Ooh. Not what I expected, like, nearly 200. Ooh. Hello. 155. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm, I'm going to be using him. That's really good. I'm trying to think of what that put him on power. With. I know people are, like, struggling to find out what role to use him in, but I would literally use him as a ballistic missile and just fly him up the board. Yep. 
and he will destroy most things. Yeah, I feel this like. is what I love that Warlord Kill just isn't a thing now. Unless your yeah. opponent takes it as a secondary, yeah, you like, can just yeah. you can just eat your Warlord off. Of he goes. And See just, you later. Yeah, I don't care if you die. You're gonna kill some people on the way. The Librarian Dreadnought is so cool, but for some reason they've made it so you only make one attack with the Halberd. What? So you used to make all the attacks with the Halberd, now you mm. don't do that, you make one. And then the rest, the rest are with your fists. Yeah. It, it, it's very strange. I, I don't know why you've done that, GW. They also had a relic for those where they got a special sarcophagus, so they got extra like bonuses to cast and stuff, that's been yeah. taken away. Huh. So that looks weird, it's not like they've been abused, is it? Astaroth! Whatever. He's, he, he looks cool. He's like the high chaplain. He's a mm. bit funky. Lamartes, I love him because he's absolutely mental. Lamartes. Oh, he's so cool. So, just everything that you'd expect with Lamartes is pretty good. Have you got Lamartes? I don't, actually. Because I never run special characters, so Mephiston mm. is literally the third. No, I lie. I had Dante when I was a kid, but I had Dante because you used to buy Dante and you came in a box with a Blood Angels command squad. And they all had jump packs. So hear me out. They were plastic. Plastic bodies. Metal jump packs. You had plastic Dante? No, it be were metal. Oh, I was going to say. But the, the command squad was plastic, and then the jetpack uh... was metal. And one of them had a banner that connected onto the arm joint, and it was <laughs> metal. I remember. Why? I remember a plastic model with a metal jump pack. I was gluing, like, two peas to the bottom. I hate it. Horrible. Yeah. Oh, I'm so um, glad those days are gone. Days. <laughs> Here's a weird character. He's dead, but we still we have a model, so we have rules for him. Captain Tycho, you get him before he goes to the Black Rage and after. Nice. But he's already he died like a long time ago. He died in like the second or third war of Armageddon. So why is he still in the Codex? No idea. It's not like you haven't got enough of the I've, ne I've not seen anywhere selling the model, so I I I, I don't know. That's very odd. They should be legends. Yeah, he should. Surely. He should really. Sangry Garston. So they're Bolt gun for the Sangre Guard. 18 inch, Assault 2, Strength 4, minus 1. 1 damage. Is that right? Pretty good. They can also have a plus pistol if you so wish. So they've got... Oh, their options are an axe, which is plus 2 strength, minus 2, 2 damage. Nice. The sword is plus 1 strength, minus 3, 2 damage. Ooh. I take the axe or the sword. And then the power fist you just wouldn't take. No, I don't know why. Because it's minus 1 to hit. Yeah. It has... The same stat line minus the times two strength of the sword. So the damage in the AP is the same, but you just get times two strength. Your blood you angels. Don't need times two you're getting plus one to wound anyway. Don't yeah. matter. No. You're fine. I can't see why anybody would ever take a plus one strength on the sword. You go to strength five. You're winning most stuff on threes, then twos, because you're yeah. blood angels. Yeah, so no. they're good. Sangry Ancient, Death Company Dreads. I like Death Company. Oh, I love Death Company Dreads. Magna Grapple's changed. It's not as good as it used to be. What does it do now? So if you try to fall back from combat, I roll like 2d6. And if it's less than the strength characteristic of the enemy model, it can fall back. So if I roll 2d6, it's higher than your strength, you're stuck. But it only works against vehicles. Yeah, vehicles. No, not monsters. No. Which was weird, because they did the post, and in the artwork for it, it showed off him fighting the can effects. Yeah, I don't get that. It used to be, if you charged a vehicle, you got a bonus to your charge. Yeah. And it was amazing. Because you, like you paid two inches off. You paid points for it and you'd like mm. fire it, stick it on, and you'd like pull yourself in. It was so cool. Yeah. And now it's not very good. I don't get that. And in the artwork here, Why? he's fighting the can effects. It's literally that artwork. Yeah. What the He's fighting the can effects. It's just vehicles. I don't get it. Excluding aircraft, obviously. That would be hilarious if you could magma grapple an aircraft and it couldn't get away. Yeah. So, I don't get that. What vehicle is going to be trying to fall? Oh, I suppose if you throw him into a tank, that tank's going to want to... F but no, that, why is the tank going to want to fall back? He's going to just sit there and shoot, shoot you. Yeah. Especially if you death guard with the new rolls. Mm. Yeah, they're strange from that. You don't have to pay for it though, do you? Just no, get you get it in the model now, I well, guess. We was an upgrade before. So yeah. you've got your death company, which are just really good. I love Death Company. So weirdly enough, the in power level, the regular Death Company, the minimum version, costs less than the... costs more than the Intercessor version. I don't know why. Hang on, say that again. The oh, they come with a jump packer standard. Right. <laughs> oh, do they? No, 
No, you have to equip. I'm so confused. They cost more. They cost one power more, and I don't know why. We think we've got to the bottom of it. We think it's because of the jump packs. So points yeah. wise, you pay for them. Power, you don't pay for upgrades. Yeah. So obviously, intercessor ones can't get them. But I'll be taking intercessor ones. So I'll run you through them. Standard space marine stat line that you'd expect, but they have three attacks. Very nice. Plus one for chainsaw. And then plus one for the chainsaw as well. Yeah. Plus one for chainsaw. Plus one shock assault. Plus one black rage. It's pretty good. That's spicy. So 60 attacks, because I'll yeah. be taking a blob 10. So you can take Death Company Intercessors and Death Company Assault Intercessors. All it is, is you Body outfit... Yeah, you just outfit your Death Company, Death Company Intercessors with Bolt Pistol and Chainsaw. You just swap in the war gear around to get the Assault version, which is what I'm doing. Nice. Why would anybody not do that? Why would you run Death Company Intercessors? intercessors I don't know. Guns? Because at first, that's just all you could do. Pain, you pay the CP. And you made an intercessor unit into Death Company mm. because they didn't. We didn't have an assault marine kit at the time, so we did, couldn't get them. So it was it was like a weird limbo thing. Mm. Furioso dreadnought. He's all right. He's a dreadnought. He can come with a frag cannon, which is funky. What does that do? Uh, it's the same thing that Death Watch have, I think. Heavy frag cannon, two D three, and it's blast. Strength, yeah. strength seven minus one two damage. That's good. Eighteen, eighteen inch range. Yeah, I think you might go out and buy one. No. Battle Predator! It's a predator. Does it have any assault weapons? No. Do I have any rules where if you advance, it's heavy weapons become If you weapons. advance, it's got overcharge endings, so you don't pay a CP. I, d I don't get it. No point in taking it. If it's flame, like we said at the start, if it's flame as were assault, you'd take it. It'd be amazing. But there's no point. Yep. No. And that's it. That is the book. That's the book. Overall impressions? I adore this book. As a Blood Angels player since I started playing 40k, I absolutely love it. I think it's brilliant. I'm really excited to use it on the channel. I am not looking forward to playing against this new book. I've had the competitive edge for a while because I've been running my Necrons yeah. with a brand new codex and now there's a new boy on the block and I'm scared. <laughs> Marines were in a good spot anyway. Yeah. The Blood Angels trait so good. And now, so good. I've just got a few little extra tidbits I can throw in. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be, it'll be interesting. Again, so the, the synergy that you yeah. can put together. It's, it's beautiful. It's really good. And to test it, we're going to use the Blood Angels and we're going to, you're going to use your, your Crons again. Yeah. And I'm, like I said, I'm going to use two of the secondaries out of the Blood Angels book, just to give them a go, so we can show you how they would be used in the game. Absolutely. And we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. I'm very excited for the Dark Angels Codex now. It looks like yes. they, they've got fluff in mind. Yes, they do. So instead of us just having weapons of the Dark Age, yeah. and going, oh, you guys like plasma, so there you yeah. go. I feel like there should be more teeth to it. Your Crusade rules will be really interesting. Yeah. I wonder if you have stuff related to hunting the Fallen. Oh. I hope so. Which might be like if you fight chaos, you get benefits and stuff. Yeah. They previewed something and interrogate a chaplain, you can actually interrogate people. Oh, really? Yeah, and then you get like benefits for it. Oh, I love interrogate chaplains as well, they are. Really cool. I like that the Blood Angels chaplains and like the Dark Angels chaplains don't have the regular chaplain role. Mm. Like it's something different, which is yeah. really cool. Absolutely. Mine babysit the Death Company until they run off and kill themselves. <laughs> yeah. And yours. Torture people? Torture Fallen and find out where their comrades are. This is pretty cool. It's always been such a huge part of the fluff, and in the game, if you're not playing against somebody who's using yeah. Fallen... I've never played against Fallen, I've never used any of the Dark Angels rules that yeah. you get boosts fighting Fallen. just doesn't happen. No. So Hopefully Crusade gives you it. I don't think the main rules will do it, I think it'll be Crusade, because it's more like a yeah. narrative aspect. But you def you'll definitely keep your trait. Space Wolves kept their trait. Yeah. We kept our trait. So that You'll plus one to hit for stand is still is sticking around and it is you hopefully you've already seen. No. No. Well, yes. I don't know. It depends when this comes it out. Depends when this comes out, yeah. We're in a weird time world. Yeah. <laughs> we the, through the magic of filmmaking and editing, I don't Indeed. know when this is coming out. So you know. might have seen the Battle Report or it might not exist yet. Mm. But it's very good is the Dark Angels trait. Very good. So that is the Codex run through for Codex Blood Angels. I'm, like I said, I'm really excited just to get the minis on the table. Yeah. All my 
new painted ones, use my fist on, use my new chaplain, my outriders, my death company, it's going to be good, so. Now that you've got the supplement, yeah. how do you feel about the whole, the Space Marine Codex and then supplements? The space, so when Space Marines first came out, I naturally just rolled my eye. I play, obviously I play Marines, because I play Blood Angels, but mm. I was like, oh, look, look at Space Marines, being Space Marines, being poster boys. Mm. But, having played your Necrons, who also have a Codex, like, it's, they're in a good place. Yeah, like, exactly. I'm like really liking Ninth so far. Yeah. So oh, hopefully, God, yeah. when Death Guard comes along, because obviously it's the big joke currently that Chaos are getting any love. Yeah. So hopefully when that drops, the Death Guard get a lot of love. It already looks like they do because the demon engines hit around on freeze now. Yeah. They can shoot in combat. So the little Blight Aurelers, they can get in, they can shoot Melter in combat on freeze. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Once that Nurgle's rock gets out of the way and we can actually get the new codexes and stuff. Yeah, it is bizarre that old Nurgle himself has been delayed by a disease. <laughs> but that's the world we're living in. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a like. Don't forget to comment down below with an army you'd like to see on the channel. Mm. And then we can look at getting a new army for the channel. Although we do have access to quite a lot Armies, actually. I think we worked out we've got like 80 different armies we've access to. Something like that. Varying levels of being painted, though, and we'd like to get them painted up before we put them on the channel. Of course. So if you guys let us know, and then we can start cracking on and working on a new army to get on the channel. Yeah. But we will see you in the next one.